Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are going to take a look at a really interesting, one-off, unique Steyrhan military trials pistol. So the Steyrhan was obviously manufactured by Steyr, it was their model of 1911 or 1912, depending on the nomenclature, uh, and the Han designation means hammer in German, because these guns had an external hammer-fired system as compared to the 1907 Steyr pistols that came before, which were striker fired. So the hammer really set this one apart, and that's what everyone ended up calling it. Now these were ultimately adopted as military pistols by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. They were used extensively in World War I. There were also some smaller contracts of them for Chile and Romania. Uh, the Bavarians bought some. I actually have a separate video out there on kind of all of the standard uh, variations on the Steyr Han. So if you're interested in more about these pistols, check out that video. I'll have a link at the end. This one, however, is unique and distinctive because the sights have been changed out for a, an adjustable long-range tangent sight. This is the sort of thing that was popular, um, especially in combination with a shoulder stock like this, uh, for automatic pistols around this time period, the, the early 20th century and the late 19th century. You'll see pretty much all of the commercially available early automatic pistols were available with an option for a shoulder stock, and often it was a combination of stock and holster. So Colts, Monlickers, Bergmans, Lugers of course, um, Mausers, all of these pistols had this option, and Steyr did as well. But what they did on this one was combine the, sh the commercially available shoulder stock with a special military sight. Let's take a closer look at that. We're actually going to start with a second different pistol. This is a commercial, uh, a cased example of a commercial sale Steyr model of 1911, Steyr Han. So came in the case with screwdriver and clip and brush and the gun itself. And while these are mechanically identical to all of the military Steyr Hans that would come later, they can be differentiated by the markings on the side of the slide. This is what's called the single line address uh, marking, and so it says Osterreich, uh, Austria, Waffenfabrik Steyr M1911 and 9mm S. So uh, this is the, about the first 500 guns, and this is serial number 60, uh, were manufactured for commercial sale, and that was uh, before any major military contracts. And we see that same marking on this military test gun. So Steyr clearly just took one of the very first guns, I mean it's number 13 here, uh, off the production line and modified it with this tangent sight for somebody's military trial. And we don't actually know whose trial, unfortunately, uh, but clearly someone had expressed an interest. Or, you know, honestly it might have just been that Steyr was doing this uh, proactively. They thought someone might be interested. Now rather like adding suppressor sights today, uh, this is higher up than the original sight, so they also had to replace the front sight. You can clearly see that if we compare it to, right here, our standard commercial gun. Little short front sight, big tall front sight uh, to go with the tangent rear. Same thing back here. The original rear sight is this notch cut into uh, the little grip um, block here, and so this one is substantially higher. Looking at this up close, you can see that it actually starts at no, <laughs> no less than 400 meters and adjusts all the way up to 1800. Barely. It doesn't really want to go that far. And yeah, that's quite the elevated sight. Your line of fire at 1800 meters is like this. You know, that, that's when you start measuring your, your sight picture with a protractor. Now in order to give this sort of extended range idea uh, just a modicum of maybe practicality, they combined it with a shoulder stock. So this is a standard commercial Steyrhan shoulder stock. These were available as an option uh, really for those first 500 guns that were sold commercially. Uh, they will fit, however, on any standard Steyrhan. Uh, and by the way, a note for my American audience, uh, the ATF has exempted uh, Steyrhans with original stocks from uh, NFA status. So they don't qualify as short-barreled rifles. You can mount an original stock on any Steyrhan pistol, which is pretty cool. It doesn't actually have to be a commercial one. Uh, any Steyrhan will qualify. So the way you actually do this, we have a cup assembly here, kind of different than most shoulder stocks, and the lever here, and that lever just tightens a little bar right in the middle. 
you really can't see it doing much inside there. Um, it just adds enough tension to hold the gun in place. So you take that, slide it in, hold it in place, and lock the lever. And then presto, you have a shoulder stock on your Steyr Han. You know, this works. Um, all of these stock holster combinations are a little bit uh, goofy in their own unique ways, and this one is no exception. If you're looking at one of these stocks, there are a number of features on them to point out. Uh, this is not an original marking. This is someone at some point personalized this with their initials, so you wouldn't normally expect that. What you do expect is um, a yellow to reddish colour of the wood with a pretty thick uh, glossy varnish on it. This attachment cup is made of uh, brass or bronze, painted with a glossy black lacquer. So this all kind of looks rather different in appearance from the gun, but that is correct and proper. That's how this should be. Uh, the lever here was fire blued. This one doesn't have much of its original bluing left, but it was originally fire blued. And nothing on the stock is serialized. So if you find one with numbers, um, those have actually been added by someone who, who was either trying to make a real stock more appealing, or was trying to make a fake stock look like a real one. At the back, the hinge plate here uh, has kind of a matte finish, almost looks like it's been lightly sandblasted, uh, and a grey finish to it. Again, different than like all of the other parts, but that is in fact correct. We can open it up, and it is of course cut to hold the pistol. Like so. And this particular stock is mated with this pistol because they had to relieve it a little bit more uh, to give space for the extended front and rear sights. In fact, you can see I've got a little bit of sawdust on the front sight there as a result. So if you ever wanted to know how to identify a Steyr Han original stock, there you go. The only other thing that is different about this particular gun is its safety lever, which is just slightly different in style uh, from the standard. So here in front is the standard lever, and here is the one on serial number 13, the trials gun. Uh, you know, just a little bit different profile. So pretty cool to get a chance to take a look at a gun that really is a unique military prototype like this. Obviously it wasn't accepted by anyone, because this is the only example they ever made that way. And for good reason. Tangent sights on pistols were really not practical. Uh, every military ended up uh, getting rid of them, because they're extra stuff to build, extra cost. And you know what? 1800 meters, really, you're not going to shoot something at 1800 meters with a Steyrhan automatic pistol. So it uh, doesn't make it any less cool, but it does make it a lot less practical for the military. So uh, if you're interested in uh, some of the more exotic uh, versions of the Steyr Han, or the commercial guns, or just the development process. The best book out there is by Motz and Schuey, uh, Development of the Automatic Pistol. This is all in German, so uh, honestly to me it's a book worth getting even if you don't read German, because of the tabulated data and the photos. If you do read German, fantastic, I highly recommend the book. Uh, anyway, and it is one of the primary sources for information about guns like this one. Thanks for watching.